Hello and welcome to Metro AV Tech Tips. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. And once again, it's Wednesday. It is. So go through your spiel, Adam. Well, as always, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and of course, like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell to let you know whenever we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Now, except for next Wednesday, you won't be here. I'll be here. You'll be here next Wednesday? Yeah, it's the week after that I'm it's not here. It's the week after that, that's right. right. Now this weekend, um, which by the way, I didn't put the picture in here. I do apologize. You didn't remind me, so I'm blaming you. Um, why not? I, exactly. This weekend, where will you be, Brent? I will be in New York, yes. right in the building right next door to Grand Central Station for yep. the annual flat panel King of TV shootout. Yes. Which is a variety of panels, 4K on Saturday, 8K on Sunday, yep. that have been ISF to within an inch of their life by yes. the best on the market. Yep. To see who has the best TV out there. Yeah. Um, and this is one of those really cool things that... Um, Hopefully, in, if I stick in the industry as long as I can, maybe I'll be uh, able to go and do one of these things well, and it's, uh, eventually. It's a, it's a lot of fun because I hang out with people, the ISF guys, that obviously are substantially smarter sure. than I am. And more keen-eyed than you, uh, too. Uh, I'm old and blind. <laughs> but they haven't, they haven't asked about speaker evaluations yet. They, yeah. That one I'll be a judge for. Sure, there you go. Yeah. But it's a, it's, it is a lot of fun. It mm -hmm. is open to the public. Yep. And... It's uh, this year being sponsored by Dealerscope yep. and Value Electronics, Robert Zone. Yep. Now, you are going specifically to make sure that we get picture on all these TVs. Yes, I have the easy job. Yeah. I'm not required to ISF the televisions. Nope. All I got to do is make sure that the cabling carries the signal yep. from point A to point B. And as I said, Saturday's 4K. Yep. Sunday is 8K. Yeah. Yeah. And Sunday I'm very excited about because we've got something new that we can talk about next Wednesday. Is, uh, can we talk about it next we Wednesday? We can talk about it next Wednesday. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we thought we could talk about the thing that I couldn't talk about, and then we yeah, couldn't but, talk about it. Well, my, my, you're right. But, <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> um, I'm talking about it Saturday, so <laughs> well, there you I go. better be able to talk about it on Wednesday. Because I'm certainly talking about it Saturday and Sunday. Now, the thing that I'm really looking forward to out of all of this is uh, the, the A to B comparison of the 4K to 8K. Now, I know they're doing separate, you know, competitions, right. but I'm, I'm assuming at some point they'll have, yes, you know, be, a, a, I, a 4K typical, and 8K. Last year, for example, there was an 8K panel set up right. during the 4K, just right. so, hey, you know what, that's where but we're going. Here's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, and, and, and that, that's what I'm looking forward to, because while the idea behind 4K is and, and versus 8K isn't necessarily more colors, it's just, because we have the, the pixel density is so much greater, we have the, the, the step between well, one pixel to another have is smaller. The perception of more colors. Mm -hmm. well, you know, let's go with the basics. As we know, 4K 60 mm -hmm. is 420. Right. Well, uh, and, and yes, correct. And, and, and in so most it's cases, 8K yeah. 420. But the difference is, at 8K we now have effectively the pixel count as we would at 4K 60 444. Right. Kind of as far as color. Right. Right. So. Yeah. There's some interesting things going on there. Yeah. Now, obviously, on some of the 8K sets, not all of them, some mm -hmm. you can get 4K 60, 444. Yep. But it does give you greater color control, even at 8K 420, yeah. than you could at 4K 60, because the pixels are smaller. Well, and we're getting deeper color as well, because we have higher bit, bit uh Well, not on the 8K, because we're still... Well, at 8K resolution, but if we right. did like the 4K, 4K. Uh, 120 right. sets. Right, you can go to 12, right. 12 bit. And, right, which and would be fantastic to see. That's that's honestly what I wanted to see was what how, it, pixel density is one thing, but just how good can we make How much more color 4K? can we get into the panel? Right, because right now we have 48 gigs, well 40, but we have this amount of bandwidth that we can utilize now. Just how much, how good can we make 1080p or 4K look? Well, and the next thing that's happening is HDR is improving. Mm -hmm. We're going away from a fixed value for the whole movie mm -hmm. to dynamic HDR. Yeah, that's going to make a huge difference. Which now, scene to scene to scene, mm -hmm. can change. Not obligated to, but can. Do you know what content they're going to be using for judging? I do not know. I've had a little bit of inkling on what's coming up that sure. I'm not allowed to talk about. Right, right, right. Um, well, because no, one's, no year, one's supposed to know, right? Like this. Well, is... last year was the Stacy Spears. Okay. And I do know they're working on new content. Okay. Um, I the, don't. The the. Yes. These guys. Yes. I think I've got. Yeah, there it is. That one. Yeah. Yeah. This is this the Stacy Spears. Um, boy, that's not easy to do and keep the flash Wait. out. 
Is that right? No, that's Spears and Munsell. It's Spears and Munsell, but it's Stacy Spears. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that absolutely that they're I'm told working on a new 8K version. Oh, cool. Oh, very cool. So now it won't be a disc. It'll be some kind of content that. I and, don't and, know because you can't download. Anyways. You know there aren't any 8K disc players uh, right. unless it's going on to a, I guess downloadable into a, that, that's a Series I'm, One Xbox. It was something like or that. Series, anyways, Series X. Yeah, Series X. Series yeah, X. Close enough. Um, <laughs> uh, is that yum? Okay, so we've got. Man, chat's already going. This is freaking great. Thank you. By the way, everybody, thank you so much for joining us in the chat that does join us, and especially to the the people who come back weekly. Uh, to join us in the chat it's it's honestly it's great uh doing that and you know as much as we do get viewers after the fact by the way if you are watching this after the fact and you're looking at the recording let us know down in the comment section below that you're you know you're that, that you're we'd checking like to know in. you're there yeah we, we, we'd like to see that now we can see the numbers rising and whatnot which is great and fantastic and all that kind of stuff but we love hearing from you specifically to let us know what it is that you are what brought you to the episode why are you watching the episode is it one because we like to make fun of brent uh or is it two because we're actually giving you good information oh you didn't know is this news to you <laughs> uh wow we don't have a one by four switcher we have a one by four splitter or are you trying to do a four by one switcher um that the one by four splitter does have scaling built into it um uh, how good can the average consumer really see? Well, you know, it, this is interesting yeah. because having done mm -hmm. the shootout now for seven or eight years. Yeah. I don't know what you qualify as average because when I go here, I'm probably the least qualified of anybody mm -hmm. at this event. Right. Legitimately. Mm -hmm. And I can see the differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not qualified to be a judge. Yeah. But I can see the differences. Now, in some cases, like the last two years, the differences between the LG and the Sony OLEDs have well, gotten very, very, very small. Well, and especially now, um, if I remember correctly, I think Sony's new display, the panel is a Samsung QLED. Not a Sony, not an LG OLED. No. Uh, well, maybe. Well, it, it's it's the newest one that they're working on. It, either it's working on it or they've released it. I'm not, I don't remember which. My one. guess would be LG. I honestly, this is yeah. not something I'm. Well, it, the only reason I, I say that because it was an actual. It, it, it's QLED, and actually, I, the the reason I I found this was uh, uh, Linus Tech Tips did a did a thing. Okay. On it. Um, the the QLED stuff is phenomenal. Oh, uh, see, and that has uh, been when, when you compare. Previous years, the Samsung to yeah. the Sony and LG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, if they've if they have really stepped up the game, that's awesome. Well, and the same. Well, but see, that's just it because you've got Samsung, who's really good at making the display or the panel itself. But then you've got Sony with their the processing. their processing, which is just takes it to the entirely new level. I'm looking forward to the. It, that's why I would want to go. Well, it's just know, it's to, a, to experience well, that. One of our competitors, who's also a friend of ours, mm -hmm. Jason Dustel from sure. AV Pro, yeah. is um, they're providing the matrix. We're providing the cabling. Yeah. Um, he's up teaching ISF classes right now. He's actually qualified to be a judge. Sure. As an ISF guy, and well, along with Joel. Yeah. Um, Joel will not be there for this event, yeah. but I know they're doing Silver? classes. Yes, they're yeah. doing classes this week, but. Um, it is. D. Wayne Davis is there. Um, Justin will be there. Dust, Dustin will be there from AV Pro. There's a lot going on Ooh. at the show, yes. That's really cool. Um, Man with George just chimed in talking about how, how to actually get the content, get 8K content. Um, he's using a dual stream 8K in an outdoor anamorphic sign. Uh, and the pitch of the screens is getting incredibly small, playing back from two video cards off of uh, solid state drives. That's really cool. Okay, how I have to how big are the solid state drives? Well, for for a one are they for one two terabyte, for well, for one media or for one one video, it probably not, doesn't need to be not be that large, but it well, doesn't need to be large enough. In case it eats up a lot of space, depending on how compressed it is. Right. Raw footage is huge. Yeah. You look at raw footage on a, on a red camera. Mm -hmm. That's a big file. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it takes up a lot of space. Um, okay. Well, anyway, so. Uh, enough talking about how you know uh, my I'm, excitement, uh, how fun you're, how much fun and, you're and gonna have And I will be there, in so. New York this well, weekend, course, enjoying New, New York, York food. Yeah, of course. You got to get a bagel and bring some bagels back with you. No, I did that last year. And you know what? Everybody, yeah, it's, yeah. 
So I'm just eating I on mean, my own. I'll eat the bagels. I'll eat anybody who doesn't want the bagel. I'll eat it because New York um, bagels, whether it's it's day old or not, it's, when it's you know it's, it's, it's your part of the country anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, so four terabytes, Mammoth George says. Okay. Yeah. Per per, per solid state drive large. or total? Yeah, good question. Per per drive or, or total? So. Um, uh, the Olympics feed in 8K uh, Intel has shown came in via standard broadband feed at about 100 meg uh, megabits per second. Huh. Really? That's pretty intense. And that was Panasonic components that they did that with. The, the, the Olympics? The Olympics, yeah. Uh, Mama says it's, it's per drive, so we have wow. eight, 8 terabytes total. Is it just one video between the two of them? I would assume so if it's dual feed. Well, if it's going to be that large, remember the, that much. the original Sony, the big Sony TV right. was multiple feed right, to right. get the 8K. Well, 4K, yeah, but right. yes, yeah. No, to get 8K because it was dual 4K inputs off their outboard drive. Wait a minute, I thought this was the 4K one that, that they no, had. No, no, this was the 8K um, prototype that they did a tour with. It was two, the two one cables that, that going had the, into it. The, the round yeah. spaceship looking. Uh, no, looking no, no, player? no, 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 the, no. No, that, that the, one was the 4K. Right, one. that was 4K. Right. But the a couple of years ago, they started the 8K tour with the big, big panel. Right. Came in the case and all, and it was dual inputs in it to right. get right. the content on it. Huh. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, enough about that. Let's talk about what we're actually here to talk about today. Right. And. And. Brent, what are we here to talk about today? Today is sources, syncs, and repeaters from HDMI. What is what? How do mm -hmm. they work? Why do they work? And how to get the most out of them? Right. So. Brent, shall Adam, I shall I ask you questions along the well, way? Well, this is let's be honest. Normally, I'm deferring to you. Yes, because we're this talking is kind about of networking right? or other stuff. Sure. that's more your sure band than mine. But sure. this is this is this is something for you. This, this is, is this I is, get to, I you get, get to. you get an episode now. <laughs> so actually, this one's kind of interesting because we came up with the, this idea, and um, recently I had to travel for uh, for other reasons uh, uh, unrelated. And uh, on the flight, I, of course, had nothing to do. So I started writing up a, a lesson plan for, uh, for AV boot camp um, and trying to break Which, by down. By the way, I saw your lesson plan. Uh, yeah. It's very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. But um, so the whole idea behind it, of course, will be breaking down literally as, as basic as we can take it as a concept, right? And then we'll, we'll build up from there, of course, back to the point where people can understand at least our episodes. Hopefully, they'll be able to understand. So. Stay tuned. I think we're I think we're going to do a trial run here uh, in in some fashion. Maybe we'll do a couple episodes to to build everybody back up. We'll do a series of, of some kind so that maybe if you've got some new uh, new integrators that you're hiring on that need some you know basics and whatnot, they can watch those yeah. episodes. Oh, I do have a question. Yeah, who's going to see you? Oh yeah, good question. Yeah, um, let us know. Mm -hmm. We will be there this year, and this year Adam will be the focus of the show. Oh yeah, with Big Dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, really excited about that. The the new uh, new Big Dog Power stuff. Um, get to we showed it off at Infocom. Um, a lot of you have already seen it. Um, we're finally getting to get this stuff. It's being shipped in right now. Cannot wait to get it into more people's hands. Cannot wait to have everybody start playing around with it um, and giving me feedback and letting me know how amazing the, the, it is. The and all map that kind of base stuff. is about ready to go. So once it hits, the product shipping. So the app is open. Uh, the the Android app is live. Um, we're waiting on iOS to finish doing their little you know Whatever special they stuff do. That, that they do. But it's on its way. The app is live on Android. Look for Mav Base on the Android uh, Play Store. M A V Base, all one word. Um, you B A S C, can also, not B A S S. Yeah, correct. Um, you can also find. I think you can also find it by looking up Big Dog. And if you can't, let me know. We're working on that to try and get Google to allow us to do that. So Okay, well, I have some questions for you, because today is source, repeaters, and syncs. Yes. What is a source? Uh, it's the thing at the beginning. Well, that's a good answer, um, but <laughs> what is a source from an uh, HDMI standpoint? So it's the thing that has the content that's going to be sent out to be displayed. Okay. Or, or heard or, or consumed, we'll, we'll say that. Right? It's anything with an HDMI out only. Only. Right. That's okay. a source. That's a source. Okay. What is an HDMI sync? Uh, it's something with only an HDMI input based on, on your your. That's a pretty fair. For the other. Okay. And what is a repeater? Uh, Give it's me a quick one, answer. One that has both input and output. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's get more into detail on this because that is a very succinct and reasonably accurate right. 
possibly not 100% technical, but for the, what we do for a living, yeah. that is the correct answer. Sure. So sources. Sources are pretty simple. As he said, it's the beginning. Yeah. It's where we start. It could be a laptop, because mm -hmm. that's what we use here for right. a green screen. Right. It could be a media player. It mm -hmm. could be a gaming console. It could be a cable box. It could be anything that has an HDMI out. On Where'd it? all of our stuff go? Um, I don't know. <laughs> there you but, go. They got a Roku right there. Yeah. Or or the Xbox. That works. Okay. That's a source. Xbox. Um, ultimately, honestly. A phone. That's a source. You could plug it into a to an adapter to get that. Yep. You've got a Roku over here, right? Wow. Yeah. Source. Source. So all of these are sources. Mm -hmm. Now a source has a simple job. Mm -hmm. All it's got to do is get its content down the street. Yep. Now, how it does this depends on the sink. Right. Because what is the sink? Uh, it's the display. But ultimately, it's the product in charge. Okay. The sink is the boss, or to quote Mr. Boccaccio, the queen. Sure. Sure. It determines what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and in what flavor is it going to happen. Right. And, you know, it's like, you want to go get some ice cream? Mm-hmm. I'm going to buy some. What kind do you want? Um, don't care. I that want, makes you I, I a want, very unpicky queen. <laughs> yeah, I want, I, it, want, I want mint chocolate chip. And as queens go, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want Stewart's from upstate New York, mint chocolate chip on a sugar cone. Is that a good? That's that. That is the only thing that anyone should ever have from Stewart's in upstate New York. Okay, I, I for me anyways. That's that, that's the. And best. I do like mint chocolate chip. That's Anybody my who's from that area, you know what I'm saying. You know I'm right. So basically, send him Stewart's mint chocolate chip cookie in a uh, frozen mm -hmm. container and uh, yeah, with yeah. some dry ice around uh -huh. it. Some way to get it here. Yeah, I, I would be eternally grateful. Uh, I would so, say your name every day on, on air. Basically, at that point, you're the queen. Mm -hmm. A lousy queen. Sure. But a queen. Yeah. Because you are determining what's going to happen. Sure. I am merely the thrall that's going to make it happen for you. Good use of the word thrall, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Pay on, if you will. Yeah. Pay on. Pay on. Throw. It's my job to make sure. you happy. Sure. Okay. All right. You are the display. As a source, I'm going to determine what resolution. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to determine what resolution. I'm just going to send it to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, please, Miss Queen. Sure. What can I do for you today? Sure. That's your job. You give me the list of things. Here's what I want. Here's how I want it. Here's when I want it. Right. My job is to get it to you. That's with source. Mm -hmm. Now. Let's assume we have somebody that's an intermediary mm -hmm. that I can't connect directly to you because I'm not good enough to be in your presence. Right. I'm poorly dressed. I'm looking pretty much like I do now. Sure. But you're in your royal garb. Right. So I have to have an intermediary. An intermediator, an intermediary is a repeater. Sure. A repeater does two things. Mm -hmm. It accepts what I'm bringing you right. as an input. Right. And then it hands it off to you. Right. Now, it may dress it up a little. It mm -hmm. may put it on a fancy platter. Mm -hmm. It may take some of it away. It may say, you know what? The caramel sauce you, you brought her, she doesn't like. So I'm just going to take it off the platter so she doesn't get upset. Sure. Which could be audio. Sure. Right. That's what this does. Now, effectively, this is you. It is acting as your proxy. Right. A repeater is any device that can act as a sync mm -hmm. for receiving content, do something with it, and then output it as a, or excuse me, a repeater. Mm -hmm. Connect as a sync, and then process it, take the audio off, maybe put on-screen graphics, whatever, there with it, sure. and then send it on forward as a source. Right. So there's a lot going on there. Now, the potential for disaster, look, if we have just this. Yep. Just the Xbox. Xbox Series X, and right. we have an 8K television. Right. And we have a two meter cable connected between it. Yep. The probability that's going to work consistently all the time is pretty gosh darn high. It's very high. Not 100%, no. because life is. Correct. But it's pretty gosh darn high. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not happy with that. Kudos to Microsoft. I just noticed something. Sorry to, to break up your, your, your explanation, but if I may, how many times have you been reaching behind a piece of equipment to plug something in and you don't know what you're plugging it into, so you tried to feel the, the shape of the, of the port or whatever it is? 
and you get it wrong because you, yeah. you can't really tell, and also you can't read Braille. However, uh, Microsoft has taken it you upon just themselves that. to put a, a simplified Braille, so to speak, on the back of their... Let me see if I can show this on, on screen. Because this you is... Know, I've that you're right. I've never seen that before. Um, this is actually really, really cool. I mean, I, I might need to come in really close on... There's three right there. three plastic dots on the USB. So there's there's one little dot there. There's two on the LAN. There's three on both the USB. So you know that's a USB right there. You have four on the little expansion slot, and you have a line on the HDMI. A long line. Yeah, a longer line on the HDMI. Kudos to Microsoft, man. That's actually really cool. I'm sorry. Okay, you you were saying. Go okay. ahead. Okay. So we have my source, and yeah. we've decided that going directly to the TV uh -huh. is not what I want. I want tunes. Leo I says, want rock and roll. Leo says, this is how you describe a divorce process. <laughs> Leo's not wrong. No. <laughs> so, I now have my lawyer. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I have my divorce lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here I am. Uh -huh. Here's my divorce lawyer, uh -huh. and the TV is my wife. Uh-huh. Our ex-wife. Soon to be. Mm. Yes. So... I, hear, is, I think Lewis is in there laughing. I did. <laughs> so this actually has to do a lot of stuff now. Yes. Before, this is a fairly simple connection. Source directly to the display. Mm -hmm. Display says, here's what I want to do for Edith. The source says, fine, here you go. But now we're adding in a repeater. Yes. Now, I, by no means are we picking on Onkyo. It just happened to be a box that was sitting on the floor. Correct. Yes, correct. I have a Sony over there, and I have And this, a I believe, is the 8K um, uh, it is. Yeah, this was one of the first NK4K. ones that we could get our hands on, and we never opened it. <laughs> I, be, I believe we begged and pleaded to get it. <laughs> I think we did. <laughs> so, this now has to do a lot of the work for us. First off, it has to negotiate with the display. What can the display do? Mm -hmm. Once it gets all that stuff, it has to collect that data, and now it has to negotiate with the source. Sure. What can the source give me that will make the display happy? Sure. That a repeater can, that's the, its job. Now, a repeater, in, at least in an AVR or pre pro or processing range, mm -hmm. also does other stuff. Yes. Meaning you can extract audio, you can change resolutions, you can control what's happening at this end versus what's being put out on this end. Yeah. <laughs> it's the experts. They're, they're picking on this for never opening it. <laughs> We deserve it. Uh, yeah, we, we do. I know. And I remember it sat on the floor in <laughs> the did. office for it a did. long it time. It did, and I have to apologize because it was it was right in the middle of, of so much happening. So, but anyways, uh, Big continue. Dog. Yeah, continue. So, a lot's going on in here now. This is also a point of failure. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just AVRs. Correct. What are splitters? Yeah, they're, they're also repeaters. Correct. Yeah. Any kind of active switch. It's not just a mechanical. Right. Right. Is a repeater. Well, and, and even the active ones, those are a little. Those aren't really changing. No, they're they're the, the, they're, the media, they're, right? they're a repeater. They're, they are considered any, a repeater. Any, okay. any active switch is a legitimate repeater. The only thing that's not is this. Those straight mechanical ones are just mechanical ones. Yeah. Okay. Now, we've got splitters. We've got switches. We've mm -hmm. got AVRs, pre-pros, mm -hmm. matrixes. Is that a repeater? Yeah. And it's a it's, an, it's an advanced Com repeater. Absolutely. Complex. Very complex. If you go into video over IP, mm -hmm. very much so. Well, and in fact, now in in this in the case of the of the repeaters, like you said, they kind of are both, right? They so they have the the, the guts of the 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 receiving side, the TV, uh, the the TV, just without the the, the panel Display. and the digitizer and everything else that's happening. Um, not digitizer, digitizers uh, for touch screens, but it has the it has like the inputs. Of Basically, it, the, it's everything the, but the screen. Right, and then from there, it has the ability to process that information, pull off the audio for like if it's an AVR of some mm -hmm. kind, and then send you know repack the the video and send it back. Oh, on it has way. to it deserializes it, does all its job, then right. reserializes it and sends it on. Right. So video over IP or extenders is an HD base T a yes. repeater. Yes. Yes, very much so. Um, and actually, that's because it's taking the, the video data that's coming into it, it's compressing it. Changing it. Changing it. And uh, in, in the case of our 120 meter uh, extender, it's compressing it twice over. Mm -hmm. um, and then decompressing it on the other side and resending it back out. Reconstituting yeah. it and putting it out. Now, we're still, it's still considered a repeater because we are modifying the signal. Well, it's because you have a separate input and an output. Right. So you have the input to an HD base T or any extender. Mm -hmm. 
that's not just a physical breakout. Look, right. there are physical breakouts. Yeah. There are cheap, inexpensive 1080p mm -hmm. extenders that are nothing but a breakout that has the wires coming in and, can, you know, just, okay, this is going directly to this HDM to Cat5 cable sure. and then out. Yeah. Now, that that is not a, a, a repeater. No, that's the, first it's, off. It's I don't even know they, cable, I don't even know they right? still have them. Well, well it's I mean, a that's a Balin. That is legitimately a Balin. Well, it's not going from balanced to unbalanced, right? Sure, it is. Is it? Yep. It's not just taking and you're changing for conductor? impedance as well. No, how many conductors are in an HDMI cable? But you have the ones that use two category you wires. So you do combine grounds. But effectively, you're also changing impedance. What's the impedance of an HDMI cable? Oh, true. Yeah. No, I don't know the, the answer to that one. 75 ohms. What's the impedance of a Cat5 cable? Not that. 110. Yeah. Okay. All right. What is the actual... A Balin typically is something that does impedance as right. well as balanced to unbalanced. Right. Okay. So when you... Then, of course, you have the outputs, which, of course, in, in this case... Is pretty much a source. It right? is exactly it's taking a source. whatever media it's being given and, and transmitting it out from there. Okay, now let's talk about some of the problems that can happen with sources, mm -hmm. repeaters, and sinks. And we've taken these calls. Yeah. So let's say I have a 1080 to a 1080p display. Right. But I have a 4K source and a 4K AVR. Right. What can potentially go wrong? Well, we could get the we could be given the wrong or weird edit from the TV because the TV says, I don't know what 4K is. So it sends back whatever edit it, it wants. This, devi this device could get confused this or this device, device could get confused. This device does not always negotiate properly downstream. Right. And again, we're not picking on Onkyo in this no, case. It just, just happens repeater, to be the box setting yeah, there. Repeater, yeah. Yeah, a repeater. It could be a matrix. But AVR is more commonly than other devices. Right. If you have a 4K source and a 4K AVR or 8K and 8K yep. and a non-matching display, yep. You can run into issues, and we've all taken these calls. So let's say we have a 4K Roku. Yep. We have a 4K AVR, but I have a 1080p display, and we see the issues with it not wanting to drop the resolution down to 1080p. Right. Because this is saying, hey, I can do 4K. And this is saying, great, I can give you 4K. Right. So it is. What's the answer? Well, you. what I would do anyways is I would go to both of these devices, and in any way possible, limit them manually down to 1080p. And that, that's a good first step, but it doesn't always function. Sure. Because sometimes automation takes over, not, not automation well, like Control 4, but automation, the intelligence between these two devices takes over what you tell it. Right. Well, and, and that's something that I will definitely call out Roku for, because Roku is fantastic in many ways. They have the best integration capabilities with automation systems and whatever else. And honestly, it's just ridiculously easy to use. However, the the fact that Roku, whenever it powers down or loses power and then, and then is, it claims it back, it resyncs and resays, oh, you're 4K, great, here's 4K. Instead of saying, what was I doing last? It just, right. it just so, here it is. Okay, I have, again, 4K source, 4K VR, 1080p display, and this still exists out there, yep. particularly off matrixes. What's the solution? Scalar? What's the simplest solution? Scalar? Nope. No. What is it? A 1080p Roku. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because in that case, the... It can't go to 4K. No, because the Onkyo is basically saying, hey, here's 4... You know, uh, we can do 4K and all this stuff underneath of it. And, th and then the, the 1080p Roku is just like, I don't know what the rest of that stuff is, so here's 1080p. Exactly. And, just sends 1080p. and that solves the problem. And I sure. probably get two of those a week. Sure. Yeah. Because what happens is the TV... You may get the TV's upgraded. Mm -hmm. The AVR's not, but the source is. Mm-hmm. So the TV says, yeah, I can do 4K. Mm -hmm. And that metadata is not cleaned up by the old AVRs because it doesn't know to clean it up. Mm -hmm. So this may be outputting 4K. The TV says I can do 4K, but the AVR can't. Mm -hmm. Or you have a 4K source, 4K yep. AVR, and a 1080p display. Yeah. Uh, source is seeing the AVR and thinking, hey, great, let's rock on. Yeah. So uh, the, um, X, they're saying Xbox Series X HDMI CEC have, uh, has lots of bugs. Yes, it does. Um, they're supposed to be doing a firmware update at some point that, that fixes that. Um, I, I don't know how serious they're getting into it, but the CEC functionality from the Xbox is not great. It's better than what it was. Um, they've released a couple updates that help to fix things like sending the TVs into game mode. Um, so keep an eye open for, for updates like that, and if possible, go ahead and apply them. Um, I am, you know, I'm, I'm going to derail again if, if, if I can really quick. I'm, I have been and still am of the mindset of if it's not broke, don't fix it. Turn when off auto comes, update. When it comes to firmware updates, right? I turn off auto update and just just leave that. Now I'm still not a fan of auto updates. Nope. 
But I will say that if an update is available, it's usually one of the first things that I do. And simply for the fact that more and more updates are more than just bug fix updates. They're actually either adding features or they're fixing major problems with, with, with systems. So and see, myself, I'm, 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 I'm more hesitant to, than you. Well, and, and if that's there's kinda, an update, the first thing I do is search, update. <laughs> what does this update do? Yeah, what, what, what problems? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Having been burnt enough in the past, yeah. I won't do that. Now, my first, if when we get a call, the first thing I ask your customer, okay, is the TV and the AVR updated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do a quick check if, if there's no reasons not to update. Yeah. Now, do you remember when they first started shipping Blu ray players? That when you put in every disc, it would search for an update for that player based on that disc? Uh, yeah, because they live. Yeah, because you, you would be able to get like, here's information about the, per, yeah. the actor on screen. Oh, was that or a disaster? What they're doing or whatever. Because it, it could lock you up for half an hour. Well, and, and it could have been something great. It's just that at the time, the, the, the processor in those and the, the internet speeds at the time just could not handle nope. what they were trying to do. Well, okay. How many times have we gone to start a show? You open up the laptop and it says, Microsoft update happening. Mm hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. crap. Yeah. Yeah, we have learned. We now turn on the laptops at least two hours ahead of time. Okay. <laughs> at least two hours. Yeah, because we've learned, and yeah. again, the hard way. So, auto update, turn it off. Uh, yes, I do mean that, but unfortunately, Apple, um, they kind of do whatever they want uh, along with DirecTV. And they uh, they're saying, uh, so you mean when Apple TV released an update and all of our clients ran it and broke the integration with Control 4? Yeah, that update. I'm familiar with it. There's also the one that uh, that killed the uh, the Sonos integration with Control 4, which was fantastic. I lost so much money for that stupid update that it... Uh, anyways. Uh, I'm on the Crestron side of it, so I don't... Uh, yeah, well, 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 you're on the old Crestron side of it. The newer That's true. Crestron stuff also got screwed with that update because it was Sonos side doing the doing the change to it. Not great. Um, Leo is asking, he's got a JVC NXZ3. Okay. It's a 1080p faux K. Right, that's a wiggle chip. Right. Uh, Yamaha RX V4A, Roku Ultra. Okay, that's an AK. Yep, Roku Ultra. Um, he's got a Verizon 4K player. Projector won't get 4K, only 1080p. If I connect straight to projector, he gets 4K 60. It's an, uh, so if, if it's the Yamaha, the RX V4? Does he need okay. to go in and change what that? You, what you may have to do, mm -hmm. I have not played enough with the Yamaha 4As. Yeah. Because we haven't been able to get one. Yeah. Or the 6A. Yeah. Um, what you might want to consider doing, Leo, is going online to Amazon mm -hmm. and getting one of the inline mm -hmm. EDID emulators. Because the wiggle chips have a different EDID. Yeah. So what you want to get is a 4K30. 422 EDID emulator. Uh, it's an HDMI piece. Yeah, you do want the 4K30 because of the, right, because of it's, the projector. It's, it's yeah. basically, look, it's still a 1.4 chipset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not going to support HDR. Yeah. Which can be the, the source and the AVR are telling themselves we can go here. Right. The projector can't. Right. And when you stick it directly to the projector, the projector is telling the source we can't. So remember what I was saying? Sometimes this will fool the source into thinking the display can. And that's, and that's exactly what, what we're talking about right now. Right. So in fact, could he also uh, could he also take something like our 1x2 splitter, splitter scaler and copy the EDID of the projector? Because when he plugs in directly to the projector, he gets picture perfectly yes. fine. Right. So he could copy the EDID from the projector. And put that between... The second output right. goes to the, to the receiver to get audio there. Yes. And granted, that means that... You've got. Um, oh no, no, he can put it. He can also put it on the output. Yeah. Of oh, the Roku, on, not the AVR, because the AVR well, is already well, ignoring the projector. He's also got. He's also got the Verizon 4K player, and he's having a problem there as well. Okay, then. Here's so you would, you, need, you would need okay. two of them in, in, for, no. for my fix for it, anyways. My fix would be our 4X1 switch. With the uh, splitter between the with switch up. and the AVR. Oh, and doing a breakout. Or getting the little inline pieces that I talked about. Yeah. And putting them on the sources. At yeah, 4K30. you can do that. Yeah. Because you've got to keep it under the 10 gig rule. Yeah. Should we look at bringing it in and we, just just that one, just that piece? The, you just know, the, that every time 4K, we discuss about it, we say, well, sooner or later, all this this old stuff's going to disappear. About the time we get the product I in. Mean, I mean, if we can if we can do a low MOQ where it just does. Yeah, might be worth it. 
Let us know in the chat. Let us know in the comments if it would be worth it to you for us to bring in something like that. Because um, it does solve those issues. Yeah. Uh, one month for two weeks and it broke. Uh, What's the oh, question? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, about the Xbox CEC stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Especially being in the Insider, so you're getting some of the early stuff that, that gets released for it. So, anyways. Yeah. Now, remember, our Xbox was uh, kind of sideways. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. Now, when we talk about the source repeater sync, yes. right? So, and, and I think it's important to say sync in that because I, I put on their display on, on, the, on the screen, but it is, it's, it's, it's the sync. Right, because any, the... any, any next mm -hmm. in line device, mm -hmm. Whether it's an AVR, a switch, a splitter, a matrix, yeah. excuse me, an extender, yeah. it's a sync. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So with, and well, and unless you're with, you know, if you're control four trained, you would call it an endpoint, but that would, you know, that's that neither sounds, here nor there. That sounds brand specific. Brand specific. Um, Although I didn't notice that it, word it frequently works. in your uh, boot camp. Because it works, it makes sense. When, when you really look at it, it makes sense. When you start using it, it makes drank, sense. You just drank the Kool-Aid. It's well, well, it is red Kool-Aid, so you know there's that. Um, okay, but you have so the source device, of course, is the device that has the content that's going to be watched, right? And it right. has the one now, HDMI. Remember, the, the source device doesn't decide anything. No, it's told what to do by the next device in line. Right. So it's it's given the menu of what that one device can do. And it's trying to do the highest of whatever that next device no, no, can do, no, right? No, no, it's not, it's no. Not, it does not make any decisions. The next device in line tells it what to do. It says, what can you do? I'm an AVR, you're a source. I can accept this, this, and this. What can you do? You can give me this, this, and this. Right. It is my job to tell you what to do. You pick the highest common denominator. I pick the highest common denominator. You output it. So what do I what do I care if you send me the the your table? Right, that's your. All I'm asking you is I'm asking for responses from you. I'm not asking for statements. I'm asking for responses. Okay. Now here's the thing. So basically, you're saying I can do this. Can you? And I say yes. Right. I can do this. Can you? I can say no. Yes, that is correct. Then I have to make that decision. But the problem is this: is if I am this. Mm -hmm making the decision for this, and you are the display, uh -huh. but you can't hear anything this is being output or seeing it. Mm -hmm. Even though I've made these decisions, it's going nowhere. Right. So, so first, if, if the communication from the display to the repeater is messed up, then it's your, well, you know. Well, here, the theory is this is all backwardly compatible. Sure. Backwardly compatible in theory in theory sure frequently the steps are missed along the way right now there are some things you can do to help mm -hmm. the one by two splitter that you mentioned with the auto scaling built in yeah that fixes a lot of issues it should be in everybody's truck as a basic tool mm -hmm. I'm not considering it as a splitter I'm considering it as a scaling repair tool sure yeah I, and, it just and I happens agree with to that. have two outputs yeah I agree with that yep you know, we actually looked at building it as a single unit, specifically as a tool, and the cost difference was yeah. not there. Might as well so put it in the why have two SKUs? Yeah, yeah, that's where you can use it for two yeah. things. Well, and it, and it has the, the copy ability, which is great. It solves a lot of those problems to, you know, I'm, I need this EDIT over here, but I also have this device right. that needs something Now, the different. next thing is the Junior 3, mm -hmm. the HDMI JR3, or the AI2, AIO2, which both yep. have the EDI repair. Yeah, correct. If there's any issues with communication between the display side, yes. sync, yes. and the source AVR, yes. in this case, yep. it cleans those up. Now, it doesn't now replace that's, those commands. No, correct. It, it's it just not, makes the communication happen. It's not changing the content of the signal. It's assisting the signal right. to get just where it needs to go. Just allowing the signal to get there. Right. Now, this is still a lot it's also of not, It's also not repeating the signal. Right. It's it's all it's doing is it's clearing. It's it's the snowplow, right? right. It's, it's, it's just, just clearing the it's way. It's stripping capacitive loading yeah. off the data bus. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's, and now, having said that, that's a lot, mm -hmm. but that's what it does. Yeah. So we're not a repeater. The GA1, mm -hmm. which takes a degraded HDMI, end of the cable, degraded mm -hmm. TMDS video, right. and rebuilds it by literally recreating it, that's a repeater. Right. The GA2 is a repeater. Right. 
because it does that. Any extender is a repeater mm -hmm. because it takes a signal, does something to it, and recreates it, whether it deserializes it or you know, breaks it down, deserializes it, reserializes it, and sends it on, right. or it converts it from HDMI to PAN5 back to HDMI, or mm -hmm. an optical cable. Yes. An optical cable is a repeater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're taking that signal in, converting it to flashes of light, running it down the length, and then reconverting it. Well, in that case, then an active cable is also absolutely a, a red mirror. Just a red mirror or, or a Titan. Or, yeah. So it, unless you unless you're putting a passive device in play, whether it's a cable or or like the the, the, the valens, uh, or the switch, unless it's an unless it's passive. It would. It should be considered right. If it has an in repeater. and out with any electronics involved in it, mm -hmm. it's effectively a repeater. Yeah. Mammoth George says he's using the one by two as a test output for remote displays that you can't see. So they're putting it in like like in the closet so that they can plug in and plug in like a local test monitor mm -hmm. to see what's actually on that display. Now you can also use the one if you have an ABOD or an audio breakout, mm -hmm. and sometimes the source does require a video at the other end. Yes. Yeah. You can take that splitter copy, mm -hmm. and he did, and put it on the output of the APOD, and it thinks there's a display there. Because it is sending the display he did back. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that a minute. Let it sink in. No. Yes. No, because when, when you disconnect from the, from the display, it, it renegotiates. It, it, it's, does it hold it, it on does copy? Not, no, that one does not hold the, the EDID on the copy. So as soon as you disconnect, it's using, it's, it just reverts back to the default 4K30. So it's only... Or 4K60. It's only prioritizing that port as the... Yes. Yeah. So it copies the EDID on that port, oh, but that, it doesn't that, retain it. That. Yeah. You didn't realize that, did you? No. no. I'm so happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. It doesn't, it, it doesn't retain it, unfortunately. Or else, yes, what you're cons what you're saying would work, um, but that also kind of goes into the other thing. If we had that little teeny tiny, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, it's not even plugged in anymore. What happened to it? I don't. I don't know what was it. Someone stole my stuff. I had like a little, um, the little emulator thing that, oh, that yeah. emulates a display. It's, right. It's not. A, it's not a. I have uh, to use thing. it. Frequently have to use those on uh, Mac, mm -hmm. Mac Minis if you're doing remote desktop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Well, what about displays or sinks? What do we need to know about sinks? Well, the most thing, the most important thing to know about a sink, honestly, is mm -hmm. if it's an older TV, mm -hmm. replace it. Do something that's fully compatible with the other gear. I'm amazed at the guys that want to hold on to older sets. Yeah. Particularly with the cost of sets now. Yeah. It's you like, just okay, picked up what a 65 inch or, yeah. or 55? 50, uh, 50 inch for 270. Yeah. It's cheap. It's no, cheap. and here's you know, it's talking to guys past week because we went through the emulator and the other options, like, or just buy a new TV. Mm -hmm. 65 inches now. Look. The guy's got an older plasma. I think it was a Samsung. Yeah. So it's not like it was the greatest picture in the world to start with. No. I think it was a TOC, the old Touch of Color ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the pictures, eh. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing. The ones that, that were saying, go ahead and replace the TV, even if you went for the cheap, you know. It's better. TV, it's, it, the picture's definitely better it's, than, than what we've yeah. had. It may not be the best. But it's still better than what they had. And it's going to work what with the e -dead. Yeah, correct. Um, I, oh, uh, Mammoth George is asking for an audio breakout that gives all the channels from HDMI audio. So, well, now, I, I, are we I'm talking, gonna, yeah, correct, Dolby Digital? Are we talking Atmos? Uh, well, yeah, and so that's that's the problem. Can we can we develop one that has the Dolby Digital outputs? You know, we it has do. a 5.1. Oh, as an RCA, as RC, as analog. We we can develop no, we'll that, never sell it, but we would never sell it unfortunately because there wouldn't be enough demand for it for the cost of what it is. Um, they Dolby licensing charges per output. It so is not inexpensive. You have stereo output. You're paying for both of those. You have five point one. You're paying for six outputs. Um, yeah, yeah. But the one. But if you're looking for one that does Dolby, that's a that's a pre pro. You're you're basically putting a pre-pro in place because it needs to have the processor that's capable of doing the 3D And if you're doing Atmos, how do you pick how many outputs to have? 
Uh, well, and well, that's that that part of it's fine. You you burn that in to where it says I have five outputs or seven outputs. But, I mean, that's it. How do you but, how big do you build? Oh, well, and that's just it. Yeah, right. So. Um, yeah, as much as we would love to do something like that, unfortunately, the 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 cost of doing it versus the sell the, the sell through of it. <sighs> yeah, sadly, look, ultimately, look, if you all would buy all of our stuff, you know, constantly and buy everything we have in stock, then yes, we would. Uh, but there's a lot more I'm, we can build. I'm picking. I'm picking. Um, so let's see. Buy early, buy often, buy a lot. That is exactly why, Leo. Um, that's exactly why. He says, maybe that's why no AVRs have multi-channel in and out anymore. No, um, they did. Yeah, they did. But that's one of the reasons. They, the, the, the cost of doing it now well, and, for and, just okay. the licensing is What was is the last source that you can think of that had analog multi-channel out on it? Oppo. Yeah. Oppo. Yep. Oh, and PC. I, I, my PC at home um, really? is, yeah, is less than... Less it than three years old. Multi-channel, yes. not not down converter. Correct. Yeah, it has multi-channel output. I have I have a five a five one analog analog output. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah, that's and that is still fairly common on PC. Um, it's not that great, but it's there. Um, but yeah, yeah. But again, not going to happen very often for something like that. So. No, the Oppo. Yes. Yeah. The Oppo. But, yeah. Or the well, did the one the Panasonic, uh, Panasonic did, did the pan, the new one? Come I'm going to say no. I'm gonna I could be wrong. I'm going to look it up. Do we still have the Oppo setup? Yeah, it's here. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is it still? It was giving us some issues, as I recall. Were those disc specific, or was that general? It's tired. I uh, that was that was because we were leaving it on for weeks at a time on accident, not realizing that accident? it was running. Accident. We just never turned it off. Well, that was that was yeah. Accident my butt. We just never turned it off. So there was the UB900, I think, is the, the Panasonic uh, answer to the Oppo. Well, yeah. Call it the answer. Rebadged. I don't even see their Photos? stuff on there. No, Cup I don't see damage is at the top. See if anybody else... Yeah, that's it. Um, and that one does it looks not. Looks like it. No. Oh, is that component? Yeah, that's audio. Yep. Yeah, but it's it's two channel audio. It's not actually giving you any of the other. Okay, so other than the Oppo two hundred three two hundred four, mm -hmm. those days are done. So, unless you know of one, let us know. Let us know in 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 the chat or in the comments. Um, okay. Well, Brent, we are at just under an hour. We're at three forty seven right now. Um, okay. I think we've covered the basics I, of yeah. sources, yeah. sinks, and repeaters. Right. And guys, a couple of things to keep in your truck. We've talked about this enough, but get yourself a one by two splitter. It really is a great problem solver, mm -hmm. and they're inexpensive. That's they should right. just be a couple in your truck because sometimes you need them. Yep. The HDM Junior, that's a great way to solve issues with EDID. And of course, the AIO. If you don't have an AIO in your truck, you're crazy. Yeah, makes a makes a huge difference to it. Um, let's see, we have uh, understanding source sync. What happens when there it is? Next week. Next week. Next week. I'll be here. We ha you're, you'll be here. We actually have an interesting episode next week, and I'm actually kind of excited about it because I'm going to do a demonstration uh, next week to showcase the the discussion is on what happens when you coil a cable. Oh. Because we know this. We have the answer for this. Now, we're not allowed to show that, uh, unfortunately. The, the thing that... that the is, machine. Is, yeah, the, yeah, that thing. But I can at least show what happens when you coil a cable um, in another way. I, 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 have, I have a whole plan for this on... But um, yeah, don't coil your speaker wire. Don't coil your HDMI cables. Don't coil your coaxes because it creates a field, and fields are bad. Yeah. Not to be confused with the field of dreams, which was good. Yes. This is a field of VM. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, field of bad. Field. Field of bad. Field of bad. Field of bad. So that's next week's video. That, that field is, of yeah. bad. In fact, I think I might just name it field of bad. Field of bad. <laughs> field of bad. Um, so come back next week where we'll talk about that. Um, I'm actually kind of excited about that. Um, Join me and, in New York and this cat, weekend. And cat cable. Yeah, if you're in the the the, the downtown Manhattan area. Yep. Uh, go check out the TV shootout. Um, you can find out more information on Dealerscope. It tells you when, where, and how. Mm -hmm. But it's the building. Literally right next door to Grand Central Station. Yeah. Yeah. I am honestly looking forward to, to hearing Me too. how the TVs do. Every year I go. Yeah. It's like, wow. 
Because, again, I'm mm -hmm. good enough to, to see that, yes, there's mo worth spending the money. Yes. I'm not good enough to say, okay, not what you're seeing. You know, for the money? Okay, no. Well, yeah. My, <laughs> you know, okay, the moray on this is slightly different than the moray oh. on that. And Leo, you, you did ask that question earlier, and I meant to answer you. Um, Leo's asking that AVS forums suck for pros. What chat form is best for integrators? You are you have two Integration that, that you pros. like. Integration pros. Yeah. And Remote Central. Yeah. Now, Remote Central is open to everybody, so yes. it does kind of. Yeah narrow down what you can talk about. Yep. And IP will have days that it's phenomenal and then, then you may have three or four days with nothing on it. Yeah. Now, the ones that I like a lot are the Facebook groups, um, mostly because they are closed groups. You have to be a dealer in order to join them. Um, and they, they, they don't, you know, verify necessarily, but it's the first list of questions that, that they ask you when you try to join the I group. I used to, back in the days when Yahoo mm -hmm. groups were still Yahoo groups. Yeah. I think it's Yahoo IO now or something I like that. I have no idea. Um, the Crestron one. Yeah. Boy, I, I spent a lot of time on that one. Mm-hmm. Because I learned a lot. Yeah. But IP, mm -hmm. RC, Remote Central, mm -hmm. Integration Pros, are my primary go-tos. Honestly, I don't know where else to go. If there's yeah. if there's forums out there, let us know because yeah. Yeah. the more um, I know, the better. Yeah, there's also, uh, Michael is saying that there's the chat in the Cedia community. Um, that's all. That would also be another really good one. Well, you know, and um, occasionally Jesse will send me something and I can never remember my login. For, for Cedia? For Cedia. Yeah, yeah, we should probably figure that out and be a little bit more active on there. We should, um, particularly you and I. I, I will say that the that the um, the integration pros, uh, Leo, you're saying it's locked. That's that's right. It, they do that on purpose. They do that so that- They don't want consumers, right. so you do have to get verified as a dealer. Right, and, and it allows you, the integrator, to to speak freely, to you know, talk about and, cost and, and other yeah, things absolutely. that happen. Absolutely, and, and if you have an issue with the manufacturer, mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, let me tell you. Well, and a lot they of manufacturers be, are on they there. Can, well, they had their own sections. Right. Um, for for many years, it could be a brutal place and mm -hmm. embarrassing if you're a manufacturer to read what yeah. they said. Yeah. Well, and Leo, I, I, I know your standings with Facebook, but the uh, truthfully, myself, personally, I don't really mess with Facebook anymore. I use Facebook for two things. One, family. That's the only... I have family members. that That's the only way that they communicate. So that's what I use. Um, and those groups. I, I only go on there for those groups. All the other stuff that, that's been, you know, what we used now, to use Facebook for. I will say I peruse yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you legitimately the last time I made a post. It would be before, uh, three years at least. Yeah. CD, uh, CD, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's also another really good one. I don't. Yeah. I, I, a lot of it's going to be sales pitchy yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff, which which is there. But they do have the groups that, that you know, are a little bit tighter. For, for me, I, I use Facebook to find new music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our new YouTube channels. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, yeah. there's some great yeah. stuff on there. Uh, follow family, same mm -hmm. as you. Mm -hmm. um, I use uh, WeChat to find, that, that's a good source for what's happening in China. Sure. Um, but that doesn't help them. No. But yeah, check those out. Um, honestly, the the I'm part of the AV installers group on Facebook, the Control Four group on Facebook, um, and I have a, a few others. I'm not remembering the names for them. Um, uh, that and that's that's exactly why uh, uh, the experts are saying that they get quicker fix responses from Facebook groups than manufacturers. I would believe that without and, question. And yes, and well, and a lot of or, times it's unless you call us. Well, that but there's there's also that that happens a lot either because someone else has run into the problem and already gotten the fix for it, and or someone within the company that you're trying to get support from is, is on actually, the group right. and they're answering questions. So well, in a lot of cases, it's from other integrators. I mean, that's the nice yeah. thing about groups is yeah. you're not talking to somebody who has a vested interest. In and not admitting there's a problem. Correct. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. Now, have... not for nothing, to, right. to blow our horn a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Somebody calls us and we've got an issue with one of our products. Yeah. At least on this side of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. If it's us, we're going to tell you. Yeah. Because we want you out of the job. Yeah. That's uh, you're not going to hear that two weeks, two weeks, mm -mm. two weeks, two mm -mm. weeks for two years. I, I don't know what you're saying. Um, that's never happened before. No, nah, that's I haven't heard that ever. No, 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 no. That that, that problem, that problem has we have never, never seen. Never seen that problem. We have never seen that problem. Um, we we won't say who we're talking about. Um, okay. Oh, they know. Anyways, uh, with that said, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Um, thank I, you for the uh, chat. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, hopefully, we've answered some questions for you. Hopefully, we've kind of you know helped to uh, demystify the source sync and and. Uh, repeater uh, thought process. Um, keep an eye open. I, I really do want to do a series 
uh, do like Agreed. the AV boot camp uh, series and of some what sort. I, the, the outline you have was fantastic. Yeah, and, and kind of build upon that a little bit and kind of get good information out there. Again, for if you have a new uh, a new uh, uh, installer, a new integrator that, that you've just brought on, uh, someone who doesn't know too much. Uh, Catch your, your kid to go to work for you? Your sales staff. Maybe maybe give give them that training a little bit too because uh, I'm taking it that simple. <laughs> I ran into uh, Chris the other day at uh, Hooligans. He was, oh, did you? And his son was out working with him. Oh, nice, very cool. Yeah, that, that's good for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, that's very very cool. So, uh, before right. before we go, one last thing. I just I know that people can see this in the background. Oh. What is this? Uh, that's the uh, single outlet. So this is the PR S1 PI. This is the Big Dog Power single outlet uh, that's plugged in. This is uh, this is actually a Stuart special. This is one of his ideas that what does that it do for you? Um, well, it gives you all the functionality of the rest of our Big Dog Power systems um, with uh, w without surge. That, that's the one thing that this doesn't have. Can you throw um, the Mav Base up on this screen real quick? Well, I can put it on on the other one. Here. No, I'm not signed into anything. I know. You're you're in though, so that's that, that's all that. Let's see, client. I don't know where that came from. That's new. That's something inside of the iPad I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. Oh, you don't have any clients in here. No, I told you. You, I, you have nothing. I got nothing. You I, got, I have no you value. Have nothing. Nada. Yet you, zilch. Oh, boy. We'll do this next time. How about that? Okay. Yeah, we're running out of time. So, everybody, um, nice. Leo says that his eight-year-old learned how to terminate Cat 6 on Saturday. Look, Which when, puts him ahead of uh, I, a lot of our phone calls. <laughs> Look, when, uh, when when you don't have when, when labor's not out there that that's willing to that, that's able or willing to get hired, uh, you got to find labor where you can find it. So <laughs> put them to work. <laughs> and on a sad note, uh, I saw there was an article in on line last week that Hyundai had twelve-year-old employees oh. in their Georgia plant. No, yeah. that's bad. That's bad. All right. Everybody, thank you for joining us today. Um, as always, uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about anything that we've talked today, or if you have ideas for what we should talk about in the future, let us know down in the comment section below, or let us know over in the chat while we're still here. Um, can I hire them to replace some of my texts? Uh, you got you to get with Leo on that one. Um, so uh, thank you for, for joining us. If you have more to talk about, leave it over in the chat section on that side, there it is, down in the comment section below. Uh, or, of course, you can reach us on our direct lines or email address. My email is adam.rogers at metroav.com. My phone number is 386-202-6132. You can reach Brent at brent.mccall at metroav or 386-202-6137. I will be in New York this weekend. When's your next travel? I will be going to West Palm on the 10th. And the eleventh. For what um, show? Well, uh, just a small, uh, small local show with one of the uh, the, the sales reps in, in that area. Is it with the distributor? Um, or? Nope, nope. Just a, it, it's a, just a local local okay. show that, that we that we put together, real small. Um, if you are in the West Palm West West Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're in and that area, CD Tech Tips coming up. Are the CD Tech seminars? Tech. What are those called? Uh, CD Tech shows. Tech summits. Tech summits. That's yep. it. Yep. Um, Metro AV will be there. It won't be here, I don't think, yeah. anytime soon. We have one. Uh, we have a couple other things coming up in this area specifically. We have other things happening in the future. Um, Brent and I will be doing a lot more traveling coming up very soon. Uh, so keep an eye open in your area. Hopefully, we'll be in your Can area. Can we uh, discuss your uh, winter situation yet? Why well, you won't be traveling in the winter? Not yet. Okay. Not not yet. Okay. Maybe two more weeks. Okay. <laughs> Maybe two more weeks. We'll just give asking. It just a little bit more time. Um, with that, everybody. Um, I don't know why they didn't invite you. Maybe you should call. You should call and find out. Uh, or just show up. That'd be even better. I'll find out what the address is, and I'll, get, I'll send you the address, and you can just Peter's show up. going to show up somewhere. Let me give me my ex-wife's address. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Michael Heiss is saying, don't forget to reserve your rooms for Cedia Expo. Um, uh, uh, quick question. Michael, are you going to uh, Plugfest at the end of October in L.A.? Good question. I know I'll be there. Mm-hmm. Well, he's in the area, so yeah, I'm that's why I'm that, asking. Yeah, I would assume it kind of fits up in his alley. I think he would. Uh... Uh, yes, yeah, CD is going to be great, um, and yeah, yes, absolutely. especially your courses, Michael. Um, you're, uh, and hopefully, we'll... now, Michael, since you're out there, how do they find out about your courses? Send me the details. He says to you. Okay. 
Anyways, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Um, as always, come back next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, like I said, we're going to be talking about what happens when you coil a, a cable um, as, and Cat6 and basically just any kind of cable that you coil don't, up. But uh, Just don't uh, is kind of what it comes you, down if to. If you gotta. Yeah, it, if you, you think to, you do. There's ways to get around it uh, and to do different things with it. But if you can get away from it, you, there, it it's good not to. Um, Okay, with that, everybody, thank you for joining us. I need to hit the right button with that. As always, who are I'm you? I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Reboot early. Reboot often. Don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC. Call tech support. Uh, and make sure that your HD base T extension is not longer than 20 meters. Or not, less longer, than not less than meters. 20 meters. Wow. Almost there. We got to find a shorter one. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Bye. Bye, everybody.